So, D linemen. You know what are D linemen going to see? You're going to see one of these one of these triggers. What are you going to do on a base block? What are you going to do on a pull? What are you going to do on a down, on a reach, on a double? Okay. What are any time? Right there. So we work on our stance and our starts and reacting off to those things over and over and over. Now, depending on the week, it's going to be what we're going to emphasize, right? If we get a, a zone team or we get a, a, a you know, gap scheme is what we're going to emphasize. But just generally speaking, that's what our D linemen do. Okay? They respond to those things. If I ask my any one of my D linemen what a, what a reach block is or what a down block is, you better tell me what it is. More importantly, you tell me what you're going to do against it. Okay? What are they doing to you? Coach, I'm getting reached. I'm getting, they're, they're doubling us. Those are the only forms of acceptable communication that we get. They gotta talk in those terms. Okay? Because when you talk in those terms, then we can respond to how we can manage that better, right? Rather than, you know, what's going on out there? Coach is kicking my ass. Okay? Well, how? Right? How's that? And fundamentally, what can we do? How can we correct that? Okay, what are the things we need to work on? Okay? Our outside linebackers, okay? Our outside linebackers in a 3-4 defense are absolutely critical, okay? Guys, our outside linebackers and our safeties are the four best athletes we have in our building at Xavier. Absolutely the four best. Our field overhang outside linebacker is a freak. This kid is smart. He's going to be strong, he's going to be fast, he's going to be athletic. He's going to be able to defend the pass game, he's going to be able to take on a 235 pound fullback, he's going to have to be able to take on a 285 or 325 pulling guard. And he's going to have to defend someone out in space. We don't have a lot of those kids in our building, but we'll find the kid that can do that. And you just sit with that as our safeties in our 3-4, okay? These kids are they practice together a lot in our practice structure, our outside guys and our safety guys are doing a lot of our perimeter fit stuff in our group segments and our D-line inside guys are working under inside fits, okay? Um, outside linebackers, inside linebackers, you know you're a linebacker in a 3-4 but you couldn't be any radically different. I mean it is totally different positions, okay? We bring some kids in that we think can play in the perimeter, they, they can't and, and vice versa. Generally speaking, our better football players are here. Our tough kids, our hammerheads are on the inside. Okay, and it's not to say they don't have thinking to do and they don't have a lot to do in there. Okay, but when we ask our kids in our 3-4 defense as an outside linebacker, we're asking them to do a lot. Okay, we've been blessed. Um, last year was the, probably the first year we didn't have a really good kid there, but the years uh, previous to that, we've had some kids that can fight out play that are playing up uh, collegiately right now. Um, and that position has been a position of authority for us. We've won that battle, okay? So, but fundamentally, guys, this is my position group. I, I take enormous pride in our anytime, in our outside linebackers and being flawless on that. Um, real quick, just, just touch on a little bit our outside linebackers. Guys, we are a, we don't strength it, we're a field boundary team, okay? So we'll have a field uh, overhang we call Fred. Our outside linebacker to the boundary is Bob. We're pretty smart, you know. We can keep things straight that way, but we have a Fred and a Bob. But even within that, they're very radically different. High school, the hash marks are pretty large in comparison to college. So having that uh, familiarity with dealing in space for our Fred is certainly different than dealing with the boundary perspective for Bob. Okay? And those guys get good looks at that. Yeah. Uh, deal with big linemen. I tell our guys all the time, there's a couple things about big dudes that they don't like. Big guys don't like playing low. Big guys that I know don't like to run. So we make our D linemen low moving targets. We want a big guy to catch a small guy. We tell our guys all the time, you get one of these guys getting a phone booth, he's gonna kick your ass. If you get him out in space and have him try touching you, he probably can't get you. Okay? 
We can't fight battles we can't win. If we play high, we're dead. High man's a dead man for us. Bow man wins. Okay? So within our concepts, with our D-line and all our recognition blocks, our down and our doubles, our reach, etc., we live under a shoot. Okay? We get a hell of a nice one. I don't know how big this thing is. Our old line guy wanted us big screen shoots. Our D-line probably uses it more than our old line does. We live in that thing. <coughs> we gotta move it because the grass underneath it just gets worked. Okay? The play low, you need to practice low. Okay? We practice low. And we move. Okay? A little redundant on this, but I, I think it's really necessary for me to talk about this. Is that we are the same thing over and over and over. Okay? We emphasize the stop to run. We work hardest in our program. The hardest thing we work on is our run fits. The hardest thing. We spend more time on our run fits. It's the extension of our indie group and our team. Okay? Over and over and over. Maximum amount of time to defending the run game. Okay? So any group team and in our inside run fits. Uh, we film our inside run every day. We film it, analyze it, bring it back to our kids. We're continuously teaching on the work on the run fits. Okay? On the run fits. And I tell you, you know, just being a defensive coach in today's world, I'll show you a clip a little bit later, it's getting harder and harder, you know, with all the RPO stuff you guys are doing now. And uh, it's a challenge, but the thing for us that we're always going to be true to is we're going to we're going to do everything we can in our power to stop that football team from running the ball. Okay, um, if we can't get it done, then we're not going to win these. Okay, we have to win that battle. Okay. Um, all right. This yep. Good question. Do you watch your film every day? Then with the kids here inside the room, which is very good. Yeah. What we do. It's funny, it's a great question, great time, okay? We don't lose the huddle battle, okay? This isn't this isn't the huddle sales guy talking to you, okay? This is the football coach talking to you now. Um, everyone in here has help. Everyone in here has help. Everyone in here has a weight room. How the hell are you using it? One of the best things about my job is I get to see how people use huddle. And then not everyone uses it the same. So to answer your question, how do we use it? kind of crazy in a lot of ways, but I think we're very efficient, okay? Um, I don't want to lose a huddle battle. So for our inside run, what do we do? Uh, we use our, our uh, instant replay technology. The college guys don't have it, but the high school guys do. So when we film it, we set up our end zone camera. So when we're filming it, it's coming right down to our iPads during practice. Um, old school, what we used to do is film, Get done with practice, walk in, plug into the computer, upload. Time you get home, watch it, and piss your wife off because you're watching the film and you're trying to eat dinner with your wife. Share it with your kids. Hope like hell they watched it. Alright, so I'm going to understand you guys. Fast forward to where we are now. We film it. Most most times, coach, we address it right on the field right after it happens, okay? Well, how can you do that in the practice structure? Things moving. Well, a group comes in, a group comes out. Look at play 12, okay? Best thing I did this year, guys, I got four huddle girls. I got four girls in the high school that wanted to help our football program. They're our filmers, they're our runners. They go, every time we film, practice in there, oh my God, God's in. So they're running around the night, hey, go see that. Or B, look at that last play, tell me. What's your trigger? Christ coach, I had a flow and I thought it was a pull. So we manage our practice video as best we can in practice. Best we can. <coughs> if we can't get to something, the other thing that's nice about this technology is that we have Wi-Fi to our field. So it goes to our iPads, we upload it, and it's already up before we walk in. So if I do want to talk to that kid and show it to him, I will show it to him before he leaves the building. <clears throat> I get home, no more video. One last thing I'm pissing my wife off with, okay? 
Second, I'm not hoping that kid watches that video. He's seen it. So ideally, ideally, and it's not always the case, but ideally, when practice ends, we leave, guess what? We're done. We're done. Okay. Um, the other thing that we use to is again with our defense, I I don't want to get all prepared. <coughs> You know, control the controllables. We talk to our kids all the time about that. We work hard. We prep hard. And we, I think, we prep smart. As a defensive coach, my my 90% of my work is done. I don't call anything on defense anymore. You spend sidelines and all this crazy stuff. It's all done. Kids know they get all their checks on their surfaces to what they're going to do. It's all done. We will adapt. I'll show you that in a second, just within the course of the game. But for the most part, our work is done. Okay. Um, the other thing we really press upon our kids, guys, is competition and passion. Okay. We preach this. We preach this. We live this. Okay. When I got a 165-pound kid going against a 300-pound kid, it. He's gonna get his ass hammered to him for two hours on a Friday night. You gotta to preach to that boy. You kids gotta to be tough. Okay? We build toughness in our kids. We and, and a lot of it is not like not, not like through like military training or anything like that, but just in how we mindset these guys. Okay? Um, I show my kids a lot of different things. I don't know if you guys are familiar with boxing, but we show my kids uh, Mickey Ward versus, uh, you guys ever want to watch some crazy shit, go to Google and type in Irish Mickey Ward in a super fight series, a three, a three uh, fight series. That was some of the best fighting I've ever seen. You know, rounds where both guys got knocked down, but they keep on fighting. We, we will talk about that kind of stuff. We'll show those type of motivational videos to our kids while fighting and battling and giving everything you have. We really we really preach toughness and getting that mindset that they can do it. Okay? We have to sell our kids on that. You know, we don't go into a fight not thinking we're not gonna win. We, we every fight we go in, every battle we go in, our kids think we're gonna win. Okay? And I know I'm probably poor opposite and a lot of people about that, but that's just how we are. And it's an internal thing, okay? I'm not going all publicly and saying that, okay? But internally, that's how we think. We think every game we play, we're gonna win. We think every battle we have, we're gonna you know, do the best we can. That's just how we train our kids. That's how we, how we think, okay? We're positive in our approach, we're confident in our, our approach, and we keep on pushing it with our kids, okay? And there's some games with some teams that we have won damn business ever to even, even win that we did. And I think the number one reason why is our kids believed it. They believed it. And they believed it because we believed it. And we instilled that in those guys. Okay? So, we play with passion. Okay? Uh, real quick, just a sideline piece of it. Other piece coaches, you know, we adjust to the game. Um, we click the next one, Jeremy. Uh, the sideline technology has really helped us out. Uh, I learned a lot with this. You know, the playoff game a couple years ago. Uh, you know, how to manage all that. If you guys have any questions on it, and I can talk about that for for an hour, like how to do that within the context of the game without screwing up, managing the game, and making the next decision you have to make. Um, but this is <coughs> important to us. Okay, so um, I'm gonna. Start diving into some video, okay? Any questions on anything so far before we jump into video and we start putting all of our triggers and stuff to work here? Yeah, Would your smaller defense line than you're talking about being low? Yep. Are there aiming points? Yes. At like the thigh pads? Are you trying to just go and pile stuff up? Or are you have to shoot a gap and then settle to heal them? Yeah, it's, it, that's a great question. And it really depends on the situation, okay? Depending on the, on the matchups that we have, there's some situations when I'll show you. I mean, I got some kids on here we play against starting for the Badgers right now on the whole line. 
then we hit that kid a lot lower than than not. And, and listen, guys, we're we're small, but we do have some dudes. I mean, every once in a while, you know, we might have the biggest guy in the field, okay? And we're going to approach it differently, that kid. Um, but for the most part, we're going to be long going to a target point. It's usually the hip to the gap that we're going to, okay. in general terms, okay? General terms, okay? Uh, our mentality inside is when in doubt, send it out, okay? We're going to try squeezing everything and getting everything going out, and we try to run to the ball. We, we feel like our perimeter guys, our second level guys, our third level guys can move. So, uh, dad always taught me, you know, you need to be good up the middle. And the short distance between, you know, two points of a straight line. Make sure that they got to go left before they go back right. So, generally speaking, coach, everything we do is, is constricting inside, squeezing off everything to the inside gap that you're responsible. 